All right, welcome back. We're talking about complex analysis, which is the study of complex numbers, complex variables, and functions of these complex variables. And one of the most important uh, properties of all complex uh, numbers is kind of this relationship between this uh, Cartesian form and this polar form uh, of that complex number, which is very, very uh, kind of elegantly represented by, by Euler's formula e to the i theta equals cos theta plus i sine of theta. So today, uh, it, this is such an important concept, I'm actually going to derive this today using the Taylor series for the exponential function e to the z, and we're going to you know, relate it uh, to what we have already been learning about complex numbers, uh, and especially how these complex functions are used in the solutions of ordinary uh, and partial differential equations. Okay, so I feel like uh, complex analysis is a little bit of a wilderness, so that's why I, I didn't shave today, because we're going into the wilderness of complex functions. Uh, let's get started. This is one of the coolest things um, in, uh, in math, okay? So we're going to take the um, complex, let's say, let's say the Taylor series for e to the z, that can be written as um, this sum, let's say the sum uh, from k equals zero to infinity of z to the power k divided by k factorial. This is just a really, really efficient way of writing down the Taylor series of my exponential function. This doesn't have to be a complex exponential. This is true for the real exponential, but it's also true for the complex exponential. So this is going to be a theme uh, in, in a lot of the following lectures when we start thinking about functions of a complex variable. We're basically going to take functions of a real variable like sine of x, cosine of x, e to the x, you know, logarithm of x. We're going to write down the Taylor series, you know, the real value Taylor series that we're used to, and then we're going to act, we're just going to plug in a complex variable into that argument and expand things out and see what happens. Okay, so that's a, a valid thing to do. Uh, and, you know, this would equal something like, uh, I hope I don't mess this up, you know, it's like 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial is just 2 plus x cubed over 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2, which is 6, uh, plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, plus dot, 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 okay? Um, maybe I'll write at least one more term. I think I need a couple of odd and a couple of even terms here. You know, plus uh, x to the fifth over 5 factorial, plus dot, 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 dot. Good. And that goes on for forever and ever and ever. And so, you know, you might think that this blows up because x to the fifth and x to the sixth get bigger and bigger if x is bigger than one, but dividing by this factorial kind of keeps that, that uh, sum bounded. And if you wanted, you could actually uh, compute the radius of convergence of this Taylor series, uh, and you would find that the radius of convergence is, you know, essentially infinite. Any, any finite valued x, this will converge because dividing by factorial, factorials grow so quickly that this thing, you know, this series kind of decays, okay? But that's not what this lecture is about. What we're going to do now is we're going to take, uh, huh, these should have been z's, I'm sorry, these are all, let's say this is uh, e to the x is equal to, this is what we're used to from the real valued Taylor series of the exponential. And now what we're going to do is we're going to replace this real variable x with our complex variable z. Okay, that's what we're going to do now. So now, uh, and I think I'll switch to blue. So now what I have is e to the z, it's going to get a little gnarly, uh, equals, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to plug in i theta because we're not trying to we're not trying to show what e to the z equals. We're trying to show what e to the i theta equals. So e to the i theta equals. Now every term x here, I'm going to replace it with i theta. So this equals one plus i theta plus i theta quantity squared over two factorial plus uh, i theta quantity cubed over three factorial plus i, and I'll go up to fifth order just like before, four over four factorial plus i theta quantity 
to the fifth power over five factorial plus dot, 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 uh, you know, plus i theta to the k power over k factorial plus dot, dot, dot to infinity, okay? This is pretty straightforward. We just uh, took the Taylor series of the exponential function, plugged in i theta uh, for the argument. And now what we're going to get to do is, you know, I think you're already going to see some of these terms have an imaginary coefficient. Some of them have a real coefficient. And for example, i squared we know is the real number negative 1. So, you know, this is going to be real the fourth power is going to be real, the sixth power is going to be real, and the odd powers, the one, the three, the five, the seven, those powers are going to be imaginary. So I'm going to be able to split this into real parts and imaginary parts. Good. And we're going to use the fact that, um, you know, i to the one power equals i, i squared equals negative one, i cubed is just i times i squared, so that's minus i, i to the fourth is i times i cubed, which is minus i squared, which is plus one. And then it repeats, i to the fifth equals uh, i, and so on and so forth, okay? So this is kind of the pattern of what happens when you take i to different powers. And we're gonna use that to kind of uh, split this up into different pieces. So this equals one, Maybe I'll just do uh, all of the i terms in pink plus i theta plus i squared theta squared. i squared is just negative 1, so that's minus theta squared over 2 factorial. i cubed is minus i, so that's minus i theta cubed over three factorial. So all of the blue terms are real, all of the pink terms are imaginary. Similarly, i to the fourth is just plus one, so that's plus theta to the fourth over four factorial. Uh, this would be i to the fifth is just i, so that's plus i theta to the fifth over five factorial, uh, plus dot, 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 dot. And so essentially now what we have is we see e to the i theta, because this expansion has all terms of even and odd powers, I get the uh, odd, the even terms are real, because i to an even power uh, is real, and the odd terms are imaginary, because i to the odd power is imaginary. Let me, let me see if I said this right. In this Taylor series of e to the x, I have you know, odd powers, you know, x to the one, x to the three, x to the five. All of those, when I plug in i theta, are going to give me you know, an imaginary, I'm, I'm gonna have a little i left over. All of the odd powers have an i in them. And all of the even powers, like one, that's just x to the zero, you know, x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, those are actually going to be real valued. The i's go away when I take i to an even power. And so now I can split this up into just the real parts, uh, 1 minus theta squared over 2 factorial plus theta to the fourth over 4 factorial plus dot, 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 plus i times all of these pink terms, which is uh, theta minus theta cubed over 3 factorial plus theta to the fifth over five factorial minus dot, dot, dot. And hopefully you recognize from kind of, uh, you know, your early calculus class, this is, this even expansion here, this is the Taylor series expansion for cosine of theta. So this is literally cosine of theta. And all of these pink terms here, these odd functions here, this is plus i times this whole thing is sine of theta. And so essentially what we've just kind of demonstrated or proven is that e to the i theta equals cosine of theta, the real part is cosine of theta, plus i times sine theta. The imaginary part of this function is sine theta.
And that's Euler's formula, one of the most important formulas, uh, definitely in complex analysis. This is the, you know, the cornerstone formula for all of complex analysis is this here. But it's also essential when we think about ordinary and partial differential equations. So when I teach my math class uh, at University of Washington, and I'm dealing with anything involving oscillations, ordinary differential equations, partial differential equations, Fourier series, uh, Fourier transforms, the first thing I do is I derive uh, Euler's formula using the Taylor series for e to the z, or e to the x, or whatever you want to call it. And when you plug in i theta for that argument, you find that this expansion, half of the terms are real, and half of the terms are imaginary, and the real terms add up to cosine of theta, and the imaginary terms add up to i sine of theta. Extremely, extremely, extremely important. Okay. Um, and it's kind of interesting, right? This is where that, uh, like the magic formula of mathematics, right? E to the i pi. This is one of the weirdest and most interesting formulas in all of mathematics. You take, you know, E, which has to do with compound interest, pi, which has to do with, you know, uh, the ratio of a circumference to the diameter of a circle, and i, which is the square root of negative one. These three, like, bizarre numbers, when you take e to the i pi, if I plug in pi here, cosine of pi is negative one and sine of pi is zero. So this just equals negative one. This is one of the weirdest uh, relationships in all of math, but it is kind of trivial when you know Euler's formula and when you know where Euler's formula comes from. Okay, so we're going to use this all the time. And what we're going to find, for example, when we solve ordinary or partial differential equations, when we say, you know, we know that the motion of this pendulum is something like theta double dot plus theta equals zero, or we know that the mass, uh, the spring mass damper has a dynamics like y double dot, uh, you know, plus y equals zero, something like that. What we're going to find is that the eigenvalues of these differential equations are going to be complex numbers, like you know, plus and minus i. And the solutions of those functions then are going to be something like e to the plus or minus i t. And so that means that the, the mass, you know, the position of the mass, the vertical position of this mass is going to be given by the real part cosine, uh, in this case cosine of t, and the velocity of this mass is going to be given by the imaginary part sine of t. Okay, so in my differential equations portion of this class, you'll see this formula come up over and over and over again because the solutions of these ordinary and partial differential equations uh, are written in terms of things like e to the i t or e to the minus i t. And we need to look at the real part and the imaginary part to give the position and the velocities uh, of these moving oscillating quantities. Okay, uh, if that was a little fast or went a little over your head, that's okay. There's a whole class on differential equations where we find out how these functions are the solutions of these differential equations. But again, you're going to be relying on knowing that this quantity, this, this formula, Euler's formula, is true. Okay, last thing I want to show you is kind of a neat, uh, almost like a corollary of Euler's formula, something called, I think it's called Demoivre's. De moi, I'm, I'm doing this completely off of memory, so I'm probably butchering this. I think this is like, you know, the Moir pattern. Um, I'm making up that connection. But de Moivre's uh, uh, relationship or theorem is essentially that if I take um, cosine theta plus i sine theta, and I take that to the nth power, this is going to seem like I'm making this up. If I take this to the nth power, that equals cosine of n theta plus i sine of n theta, which is really, really weird. If you take this expression and you actually multiply it by itself n times and you do the polynomial multiplication, you'll get a bajillion terms. It'll look like Pascal's triangle of terms. And what I'm claiming, what de Moivre claimed, is that that huge expansion of this to the nth power, all of those terms simplify, and what ends up is you just get a cosine of n theta plus i sine of n theta. That seems really bonkers and out there, but it's actually super simple to show if you know Euler's formula. I know that this is this cosine theta plus i sine theta is just e to the i theta. 
And if I take that to the nth power, e to the i theta to the nth power is just e to the i n theta. And e to the i n theta is just cosine of n theta plus i sine of n theta. So this is a really, really useful formula also. It essentially says that if I take a complex number z to the nth power, the phase angle theta just gets multiplied by n. That's a really, really useful property. Uh, and that's de Moivre's formula here. OK, good. Uh, we're going to use this everywhere. We're, Euler's formula for me is kind of one of those things. If someone shakes you awake at 2 in the morning, you're on a desert island, and someone shakes you awake uh, in, the, in the middle of the night, you should be able to not only write down Euler's formula, but derive it from scratch in the sand if you had to. OK, this is cornerstone mathematics right here. And we're going to use it all the time when we think about complex functions. We're going to use it all the time when we think about the solutions of OD ODEs and PDEs that have anything oscillatory, like a guitar string or a pendulum or a mass uh, on a spring. Okay, thank you.